Hey, this is James Arnold Taylor, voice actor, the voice of... Yeah, but dabba do, Fred Flintstone. Johnny Test, who's 11 years old and totally awesome. Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. Titus from Final Fantasy X. Oh, yes, and of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It wouldn't be coffee with Kenobi without yours truly. The force is strong here indeed. Previously on Coffee with Kenobi. I love it. I've listened to nothing else since May. Not even Bing Crosby? Not even Bing Crosby. I haven't listened listened to any Christmas music yet this year. Oh my goodness. This is serious. Yeah, yeah, I need an intervention or something, I think. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. That solo soundtrack is great, but come on, Bing Crosby. Well, as people know who listen to CWK, Pour Over, Order the Show, I am a huge Christmas fan, and I'm sure you were very excited for Christmas, too. Let's jump into the show and start celebrating Christmas in a very special way. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 156. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, rhetoric, and the best travel tips this side of the galaxy. I'm your host, Dan Z. Drinking One Nation coffee out of my Black Rancho Obi-Wan coffee mug with an orange interior. It is brand new and beautiful. Coffee with Kenobi is brought to you by MEI and Miles Fan Travel. For all of your travel needs to the Disney theme parks and the cruise lines, as well as anywhere you want to go on vacation, be sure to go to www.milesfantravel.com, the official travel agency of Coffee with Kenobi. On CWK, I invite you to join me as we think about the mythology of Star Wars in a whole new way and maybe laugh a little bit in the process. You are here with your Star Wars family as we go to our favorite coffee shop and talk Star Wars. On today's very special show, as we're getting so close to Christmas, Steve Sansweet joins us as we share our top five favorite Star Wars Christmas gifts. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. Before we get into the show and our conversation with Steve Sansweet, I want to thank Inside Editions for sending me the Star Wars Icons Han Solo book. This thing, you've seen it advertised on our Coffee with Kenobi Twitter feed and Facebook. It is a big, beautiful Star Wars book full of incredible images, illustrations, behind-the-scenes photos, screen photos, anything that it contained Han Solo, whether it's Harrison Ford, Alden Ehrenreich, or the pencils of the great Star Wars comic books of the late 70s. Up till now, book covers, stuff from the Legends line. It's amazing. What I love about it is that it's got a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, and it has a lot of stories and information that I did not know about Han Solo or the creation of the character. Got interviews from all the important icons of Han Solo, Lawrence Kasdan, George Lucas, Harrison Ford. It really is a magnificent piece of art. And like Star Wars has been doing, especially lately, These books have great images and illustrations, but they also have a ton of awesome information. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a great read and it's a great visual treat. It's a feast for the eyes. Really going to be a great stocking stuffer for someone or a present under the tree, especially if you're a Han Solo fan or if you're just a fan of mythology and Star Wars in general. I highly recommend Star Wars Icons, the Han Solo book from Inside Editions. Be sure to check it out today. So who talks first? You talk first. I talk first. Joining us today for a cup of coffee is the CEO and all-around Star Wars guru, Steve Sansweet. Hi, Dan. How are you, sir? I'm doing just great. It's a wonderful time of year. Of course, at Rancho Obi-Wan, we have our Christmas tree up all year round. So it's, right. uh, it just sort of highlighted it a little more this time of year. I, I think, wow, I would love to be at Rancho Obi-Wan at Christmas time. That's got to be gorgeous. Well, we've got the lights out uh, outside and the uh, Christmas tree up, the real Christmas tree up. Yeah, the, the one inside Rancho is not real. It's, it would be really tough to keep a pine tree alive for uh, um, 365 days. But uh, <laughs> Yes, and they're so messy anyway. And, yeah, but there's nothing like a real tree and the smell from a real tree. And uh, Christmas is definitely in the air. Oh, absolutely. And, and I said the CEO. I didn't even say what you were the CEO of. I just assume that everyone knows you're the CEO of Rancho Obi-Wan. But you're also the CEO of Star Wars, right? In, in our minds and hearts anyway? Uh, well, it, uh, there's somebody else who's the CEO. And his name is George. But uh, 
I, I take a back seat to him anytime. Well, absolutely. I, did I tell you when I, I got to go to the solo premiere and I got to meet George for the first time? Oh, great. That was pretty surreal. Yeah, he's pretty quite surreal. a guy. Yeah, it was great. My, my conversation lasted about 20 seconds, but it was, hey, 20 seconds I never thought I'd have. You know, there's always these people who say, if you see George, tell him thank you from me, you know. Yes. Just, just got that on a tour on uh, Saturday. Yeah, if you see George, That's a couple great. of guys in from uh, Illinois. Oh, really? Yeah. My neck of the woods. Yeah. That's great. I love it. Well, today's conversation is perfect. Because obviously we are very, very close to Christmas, so we wanted to talk to to you about your favorite Star Wars uh, Christmas gifts and Christmas memories. And I know you've got a good list there, and I've got a list too. So what is the first one you have for one of your top five Star Wars gifts? Well, I'll tell you. Let's, let's start by saying I'm very, very difficult to buy for when it comes to Star Wars. <laughs> um uh, it's been a an eternal frustration to my partner and my friends. And, you know, what do you get the man who has everything? Well, I don't quite have everything, but I do have a lot of Star Wars stuff. So you, you, you buy trepidatiously for me. And, and sometimes people just give up altogether. So I don't get that many Star Wars gifts these days. Um, but I can remember the first Christmas, 1977 and, um, and my, my partner, Bob just couldn't figure out what to get for me because he saw, I was buying the puzzles and, uh, you know, w- whatever was out there, the games and, um, you know, whatever was available. So he came upon the idea of getting a custom made t-shirt. And it's one of those shirts where they come with a gold foil star on it. And then you print the word like star mom or star dad or star athlete or, and instead he had just printed the word wars. Wow. So I have the gold star, the word wars in red. And, and that was my first star Wars Christmas gift. That's outstanding. And I'm assuming you still have it. I do. (laughs) I still That's have great. everything. Of course. I, still have, I still have cookies that people gave me 10 years ago. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and the second, uh, the second Christmas was, um, was something really cool because it was something that I, uh, didn't know existed. And, um, and that was the gold, um, C3PO cookie jar. I had gotten the R2 cookie jar, the R2-D2 cookie jar um, from California Originals, but uh, they were delayed in making the 3PO jar. And so because they had problems with the metallic gold finish. And so at the time that I bought the the R2-D2 jar, I didn't know that they were still working on a C-3PO jar. And so it just totally you know, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. And uh, sure. there under the tree was uh, a box uh, in, in 1978. And there was the, uh, the, the gold uh, C3PO cookie jar and which is on display proudly next to the uh, R2D2 cookie jar. That's right. That's absolutely right. Of course. I love, I love that. That's, some of the things, and we'll talk, a little, of course, a little bit more about Rancho Obi-Wan uh, after we give our top fives, but it's so fun for me that when I go back, I know I'm going to see new things or things that maybe I didn't notice because they're next to something else, but they've been moved and then just kind of pop in a different way. We're always trying to change things around because now we're getting people back for tours. You know, sometimes people come once a year. And so we want to have new things for them to see. Now, often it's the the stuff has been there. And as you said, they just didn't notice it. Um, but, uh, at least once a year, we try to do a refresh. And then of course, as new things come in and I put them on the shelves, I have to move other things away. And so we're constantly refreshing the museum on a, on an almost weekly basis. And then Which we do so a major, cool. yeah. And then we do a major refresh, uh, once a year. Well, my first one is I, I'm pretty sure it was 1978. 
And the one thing I knew that I wanted from Santa was the Kenner Millennium Falcon. And so in my memory, it, it plays out this way. I don't even know if that's actually how it happened. But in my memory, I saw all my gifts. And in the corner of my eye, I saw this large box. Hmm. And my mom always had Santa give us presents in red or green, really thin tissue paper. And I always thought, why is Santa doing that? I can see it before I open it. But I didn't complain. And so I that was the last one that I opened, and it was the Kenner Millennium Falcon. And that was just, you know, that was incredible. I still have that that beauty. It's one of my favorites in my collection. Uh, I know it's a highlight for a lot of people, too. So that's yeah. my first one. No, that, that's, a, that's a great one. And how old were you at the time? I was, let's see... I was five. Yeah, I was I was five then too. That's uh, right. I thought you looked familiar. Plus a few years. Right. Yeah, Give I or was, take. I was thirty one when Star Wars came out. <laughs> Which just blows my mind, honestly, because you're you're like Dick Clark. Uh, except I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave me a good sound bite. Thank you. <laughs> what's what's the next one you have on your list? The next one I have on my list was actually led to many many uh 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 years later uh coming up with a a, a new passion of mine. And this was this goes back at least 20 years and Bob found in some weird antique shop um Beavis and Butthead carted stormtroopers. <laughs> and this is before I knew anything about customizing figures or before this whole thing which has happened in the last dozen years of urban artists and underground artists doing these wonderful limited edition Star Wars parody figures um and uh and and friends doing wonderful figures that, you know, like the, the spirit of Leia and, and Leia and uh, Carrie Fisher's dog and, uh, things of that nature. But, uh, Beavis and Butthead, I looked at those figures and thought, holy cow, how does somebody do something like this? And they were carded and, uh, and they were very cool. And then years later, so it didn't surprise me when, all of a sudden I started seeing these customized figures around because I had customized figures way back in the day. So apparently, you know, it was probably more than, it was more than 20 years ago. It was probably 30 years ago. Yeah. The first, when they first came on the scene, I think it was like 90, 91, something like that. Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it goes back to the early days of Beavis and Butthead, whenever that was. Wow. And you've got a number of of customizable figures now, of course. I've got hundreds. Yeah. And how does, how does that work? Do people just come to the ranch for a tour and they say, by the way, I have something for you? Well, we get that occasionally, but then, you know, there are figures that I buy through uh, Design Con, and uh, I have a friend who is a major dealer in these kinds of figures, and he alerts me to things that are coming up at, San Diego Comic Con or New York Comic Con or Designer Con. And these are the major shows where the people that I collect anyway do their figures and have their figures for sale. There's people like Suck Lord, um, and, uh, who was an early, um, um, maker of these kinds of figures. And, um, I first met Suck Lord at the very first Star Wars celebration when he arrived wearing a suit jacket with a boom box and a um, Boba Fett helmet. And he wasn't making figures back then, but um, he, he certainly uh, he certainly cut a figure himself. Yeah, made an impression. Yeah, very much so. Well, that's a, that's a cool one. And plus, again, all the customizables that you have, they're, all, they're always very entertaining. Sometimes a little jaw-dropping, but in a, in a hilarious way, I would say. Yeah, some of them some of them can't be exhibited in a uh, in an all-age uh, crowd, uh, so those <laughs> we have behind the little curtain. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Clayton, Clayton Sandell and I were talking about the curtain when we were there at the last gala. Yes. 
Clayton kept insisting about seeing what was behind the curtain. And I said, no. <laughs> Wait and, until you're older, Clayton. Uh, well, yeah. Then he got somebody to, to raise the curtain for him. So, <laughs> uh, well, you know how he can be that little, that, that little, little guy. <laughs> yeah. These journalists, I don't know. You got to watch out for them. That's right. He's, he's one of my favorites. He's a great my, guy. He really is. My next one, and sort of piggybacking on the first one I had, is I actually got uh, the next Christmas, after I got the Falcon, I got the Death Star. That wonderful place that's still, for my money, the best Star Wars place I've ever made. I know some people like Yoda's Hut from Dagobah. That's also great. But there's something about that Death Star and getting the Dianoga. Uh, I remember playing with that thing for hours. And I saw the original foam, but you can't really breathe on it or it crumbles like Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. Right. You know? But that's that's definitely my second one. Yeah, and that's a neat set. I mean, and there are there are of course two versions of that. And one was available in the US and Canada, and the other one was the cardboard Death Star playset from the UK, which was also available in France and um Canada also, Australia, New Zealand. And that's one of my favorite pieces too, along with the uh the Kenner Death Star. Oh, wow. I forgot about the cardboard one. Yeah, the Palatoy Death Star is just a really, a really cool piece and one of my favorite toys of all time, Star Wars toys. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, that that is a great place for our first break. When we come back, Steve and I will give our next couple of items on our favorite Star Wars Christmas gifts. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Coffee with Kenobi. I want to take this moment to thank our CWK Patreon contributors, Rebecca Raven, Dennis Keithley, Terry Lee, Ben Elkington, Belinda Wolf, Wayne Booker, Aaron Harris, Chris Kavarka, Angela Sauce, Mediocre Jedi, Caroline Maselli, Tim Bungaroth, Chris Betts, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Jeff Ellis, Daz Davies, Christian Dale, Jason Hall, Brian McKinney, Connie Shee, Mike Audette, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco and Mark Suter. Our CWK Patreon contributors help Coffee with Kenobi to grow and expand into ways I never would have dreamed years ago. And in addition to helping out the show, there's also something that you get back as a member of CWK's Patreon family. And that is you get access to CWK Pour Over, which is our exclusive podcast that you are able to listen to, which is a weekly show. And that is only for $5 a month. And we are about to release a Christmas special that we had a wonderful time recording, and I will share a clip for you right now. <laughs> I uh, I got a little confession to make. Yes. The uh, first CD I ever owned was a Christmas CD. Yes. And it was Kenny G's Christmas Classics. <laughs> hey, there's no shame in that. <laughs> My, well, and, mine was uh, mine was Appetite for Destruction actually, by uh, Guns N' Roses, so my CD would beat up okay. your CD. I had a mine was Cheap Trick Dream Police. <laughs> mine still wins. Come on. You guys, let's just say this: you guys are really old. How about that? No, but I listened to it, I listened to it the other day. Just to just, I was like, oh yeah, I'm so good. That CD, and I, listened, yeah. I put it on. You mentioned, you mentioned the jazz, and then that's when you think of that. It was it was definitely some some smooth jazz. Kenny G, listen to the Christmas album. It was it was good stuff. We had a lot of fun with that, but I say that all the time, and that's because we do. They are super fun shows, and they're entertaining, and they also get a little bit serious on occasion. The end of the show, we talk about our favorite Christmas traditions, and we talk about our families, and it, it got a little emotional. I think I actually got a little choked up towards the end talking about, well, the real reason for the season, and it was pretty great. I, I'm so happy and blessed to be able to be able to do the show with Tom and Corey and it doesn't happen without your generosity and support. So if you're curious or want to see CWK t-shirts and coffee mugs, phone cases, and other things, be sure to go to www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi to find out how you can be a supporter of the show and listen to CWK pour over each and every week. Thank you so much. 
We are back, and we are back to Steve Sansweet and some of his very favorite Star Wars Christmas gifts. And, of course, there are so many out there, and we, we reserve the right to change our list at any point in the rest of our lives. But for now, this is once we came up with. Uh, Steve, were you on your third or fourth? No, I'm on my fourth, so you, you I think you, you have to insert one because I went to— You lapped me. Yeah. Yes, I lapped you. So <laughs> what's your next one? The next one I have is um, it's the uh, it's a tie. I, I guess we'll do a tie. No, you know what? It won't be a tie. Uh, I have, and it's not necessarily Star Wars related, but it's coffee with Kenobi related. Two years ago for Christmas, my wife surprised me, and and I'm certainly not as hard to buy for as you are, but I do have quite a few Star Wars items, and she just kind of puts her hands in the air and says, "I don't know." Sure. And plus, she she doesn't necessarily know the difference between Boba Fett and Darth Vader anyway, so you know we've got <laughs> we've got a learning curve. So. She bought me an on the an old time on the air radio light that you turn on when you're going to record that she got from a studio. And so every time I'm about to record the show, I, it's hooked up to the outside of my office, which has become uh, my own little studio. And I turn that thing on and it's just sort of a sort of a nice little uh, little love letter from my wife. It makes me Oh, wow. Happy. That, that sounds wonderful. That's, yeah. That's really. Where did she find something like that? I don't know. She said she typed in um, on the air radio sign and some site popped up. I don't know if it was eBay or what it was, but it's great. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. That's yeah. very, very cool. Well, I guess I'm up to another one. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, this would be what I call Christmas Mall. Now, not an entire mall, but one very specific mall. Darth Maul. Ah. So um, Lucasfilm every year has a uh, trivia contest, and it raises money for charities in the San Francisco and uh, Bay uh, region. And in order to ha- to have a four member team, and there are about and we end up with about sixty plus teams, you have to raise five hundred dollars. People do this by you know baking pies or selling things auctioning off things and um in in the the days when um uh, animation was at big rock ranch and um they were working on uh, clone wars um they would have an art show and it was for just four people in animation but they thought well, in order to get the bidding uh, going, th- they would ask Sansweet to come and see if he was interested in bidding on any of this stuff. So a lot of the uh, a, a bunch of the art that I have in the gallery comes from uh, the really talented artist who worked on Star Wars The Clone Wars. And there was uh, this year, this was like 2010, I guess. And... Um, Every year, Dave Filoni would do his own Christmas cards that he would send out to a select group of people. And um, he had done this really striking um, portrait of uh, Darth Maul. And you have to imagine a reindeer where his nose would be and antlers coming up above Darth Maul's own horns. I mean, it sounds very bizarre, and it probably was, but uh, it was the cover of his Christmas card. So this was the face of Darth Maul, and it had a bit of a Christmas tinge to it. And and David put up for auction his original art, and I tended to bid high on Dave's original art. So oh, I've, got yeah. a couple, I've got a couple of pieces, but I have the Darth Maul one is pretty striking and very Christmassy because it was part of the card. So I've got it. That's amazing. I would love to see that. That's really cool. Christmas Maul. Next time you come, just ask for Christmas Maul. I will. I will. That sounds, and I love when they do that. Sometimes I'm adverse to taking um, a a character and Christmasing them or, or putting them like in modern suits. Whenever I go to Disney world and, they show Mickey Mouse break dancing or something like that. I don't, of course, I don't know when the last time that happened was. I must have a time machine. But 
it always kind of throws me off. But with Star Wars, it's different for me. I, there's something about Star Wars and Christmas that's always gone together. It's maybe it's because of some of the gifts we're talking about. Certainly, since 2015, having the movies come out around Christmas time sure helps. But when I hear something like Darth Christmas Ball, that sounds that sounds exactly like the kind of stuff I love. It's very cool. I, I have very no doubt. Cool. And very so, bizarre too. <laughs> oh, sure, but in the best way possible. Uh, the next one I have on my list is a Christmas present I got for myself a couple years ago, and it is the the um, the Gentle Giant uh, exclusive Santa Yoda that they did to replicate those. Well, the the one of the one fourth scale does that sound about right? Right. Yeah, that or thing. One one, one six. One six scale. Yes. One six. And of course, based on the, the Ralph McQuarrie art of the original Lucasfilm Christmas card, I believe, and it's one of my favorite things to get out when I get the Christmas things out every every November. Yeah, this, they, they've done a a bunch of really cool pieces around Christmas time. There's a uh, there's a, a Jar Jar Binks staring at me from across the room with a uh, Santa hat and a string of what's supposed to be uh, Christmas lights around them. They're really uh, sort of uh um uh foil wrapped uh bulbs and uh sticking his tongue out there yes he is <laughs> one of my favorite things i ever heard you say is the first time i had you we had you on the show probably about four years ago uh the question came up about your favorite character and you said well it's not called rancho jar jar <laughs> <laughs> now i don't mind jar jar no, I, am not, I am not a jar jar antagonist uh he is not my favorite character yes that is true but uh jar jar had a role and i we we just had a couple of kids here uh two weekends ago on a on a tour and um one of them their favorite character was jar jar banks oh yeah they, kids and love them my kids their, love them and their favorite movie was episode one so, you know, it was the first movie they ever saw on the big screen with their folks. And that has a lot to do with what your favorite movie is. It becomes your Star Wars. I totally agree. And I find that with my students all the time, too. The one that they love is the one, the first one they saw in the theater. And I think yeah. that's the way it should be. Yeah. Except I haven't found any episode two, but <clears throat> I didn't say that. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll bring Tom in to do some Star Wars news. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Greetings. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Are you finding yourself in a position these days where you've got that one person to shop for, and they're really, really tricky because you're not sure if they've already got it, if they're interested, or if they even need anything? Well, there's one thing that I can speak, at least for myself as a guy, that I always need, and that is a good razor, which is why I love Harry's razors. I don't really need another wallet or anything like that, but I do need something that I like, that is functional, and that looks great, and that would be Harry's. Harry's right now has gifts that are amazing. You can personalize them to make it feel really special, choose a color that's right for him, and now there are limited edition holiday handles with a personal engraving option, which I think is really cool. They are ready to gift with these awesome sets that come in a handsome gift box. These gift sets, by the way, start at just $10, and you have a 100% quality guarantee. If he doesn't love it, return it, and it's really quick and hassle-free. As a special offer for fans of this show, we have partnered with Harry's to give you $5 off any shave set, including our limited edition holiday sets when you go to harrys.com slash CWK family. This offer is for new and returning customers and is only available for the holidays. Each Harry shaving set comes with an ergonomic weighted handle with an option to engrave, German engineered five blade cartridges that provide a close, comfortable shave, foaming shave gel for a rich lather, a travel cover to protect your blades, and a handsome holiday gift box. Or you just want something for yourself, redeem a Harry's trial offer to experience the quality of a shave before committing. Shipping cutoffs end this week, so act now. Go to harrys.com slash cwkfamily and get $5 off any shave set while supplies last. That's harrys.com slash cwkfamily. And be sure to get to www.wonditioncoffee.com today to get a coffee subscription 
for the best coffee this side of the galaxy, or any side of the galaxy, quite honestly, is the official brew of coffee with Kenobi. And if you enter the code Kenobi10, you get 10% off your first order. That's www.1nationcoffee.com. We are back and we are on to our news segment. Tom Gross joins us to give us the latest Star Wars news and have a little bit of fun with us. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going well. It's going well. Uh, yeah. So, whew, what a week. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I got to say. Transition so, to you by so why don't, why don't I jump into the news? How's that sound? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Too much eggnog already, I see. I guess so. Lucasfilm rounded out the cast of the upcoming show, The Mandalorian, in an announcement recently. While we heard the teasings of names in the past, this announcement makes it official that Pedro Pascal will play the lead role as the lone gunslinger in the outer reaches of the galaxy as the Mandalorian. Joining Pascal are the, in the cast are Gina Carano of Deadpool, Giancarlo Esposito of Breaking Bad, Emily Swallow of Supernatural, Carl Weathers of The Predator, Omid Abtahi of American Gods, Werner Herzog of Grizzly Man, and Nick Nolte in Affliction. The series is written and produced by John Favreau and will host an all-star director lineup, which begins with Dave Filoni directing Episode 1. The Mandalorian will release on the upcoming Disney streaming service, Disney Plus, that is set to launch late 2019. This is, uh, we had reported some stuff based on what Variety had it said, but this is the first official release from Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. but it's got everybody in it. Yeah. Some very notable actors that are, are very beloved in their own sort of subcultures of, of fandom. Because a lot of these shows you're mentioning, Breaking Bad and and things like that, they're you know they have huge followings. And Carl Weathers, yes, he's from Predator, but he's also Apollo Creed from the Rocky movies. How cool is that? That's right. Yes. So we're, yeah. this is great. I mean, they're obviously, again, they're taking it very seriously. They're bringing some very heavy hitters for actors and directors. I feel like this is really going to be a very, very high quality, very powerful program. Yeah. The names, like, I'm glad you said that about how popular these people are within their areas. I could, I, I'm not a follower of uh, really any of the programs. Um, so I don't know the names all that well, but I certainly do know the impact that each one of these shows and movies has had on fandom and how popular, wildly popular they are within, uh, within those areas. So this, this looks like fun. Uh, um, just I don't know. I'm just excited to see what they come up with. Me too. Maybe at Celebration we'll get a a trailer for the series. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Well, let's move on to our next story. As StarWars.com announced this week that a new chapter book in the popular series Jedi Academy will be coming out this March. The new book by Jarrett Krosowska and Amy Ignatow is titled Jedi Academy Return of the Sis. That's sis, as in sister. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to think someone, I, I, had a, I had a lisp or something. Return of the Sis. If you aren't familiar with this series, these books appeal to middle elementary through junior high students. But I can tell you, and I can vouch that anybody can enjoy these uh, books. The Jedi Academy is told through a mix of doodles, drawings, journal entries, and comics. Revenge of the Sis takes on the trials of starting a new school and meeting new kids and, of course, famed Jedi Masters. That's right. This was originally started by Jeffrey Brown, who did the Goodnight Darth Vader books and kind of grown into its own little franchise. And That's pretty fun. I haven't really read too many of them, but I know that they have a following, and I think it's great for kids to have little gateways up to Star Wars like this. And each book, each of the books, except for the very first one, has some kind of a clever name uh, that goes along with uh, some type of a title that we know from Star Wars. The one that always stands in my mind is the Phantom Bully. <laughs> and um, after coming coming off pretty freshly, a uh, scla- hosting a Scholastic Fair, um, I know how popular these books are with the kids. Um, and parents as well, and uh, how much fun. Just they, they're low. When you open up the book, you can just see from all the, the different varieties and formats of writing that they're just a lot of fun to read. 
So that was some exciting news from this week. And sadly, a uh, little sad news kind of here is uh, Sphero, the company that brought us the little BB-8 robot that we could roll around our homes, is saying goodbye to BB-8, R2-D2, and a few other Disney-related toys. Really? The, the company is thankful for Star Wars, making Sphero a household name and pe- a name that people know for droids. But the company is switching its focus from toy making to education and teaching STEM technology. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. I wonder if they'll still be supporting the app to control BB-8. I hope they that's do. What they're, that's what they're shutting down. Oh, yeah, no. the article, let me see. Well, how are we supposed to play with this thing? Um, well, I guess it stays on your current uh, ver- version of that app. I don't know. The, the, oh, the well, article. that'll work. Yeah, yeah, I think. Um, but yeah, they, they were putting, they were, they were, in the article I read, uh, it was saying that um, they really um, are, they really want to move the focus out of the toy making and, and, and technology to play with. And they want to move into the area where it's technology to build with and to learn with. And so they're really moving their focus into that area. And, you know, it's, it's a year where uh, Star Wars is not a December, Christmas, holiday um, right. toy. You know, it's not it's not an influence this year. And so I think it's time that they're deciding to let that license go. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So. So, yeah. So that's our news for this week. All right. I appreciate you bringing that. We will go ahead and take another break. When we come back, Steve and I will continue talking about our favorite Star Wars Christmas gifts. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Coffee, tea or me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's Coffee with Kenobi. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is the way to go for all of your travel needs. They have signature service and expert advice to help clients maximize their vacation time and dollar. They help your family enjoy everything the Disney theme parks and the cruise lines have to offer, help plan every detail, and share invaluable tips. And they're not just about Disney World or Disneyland either, even though they are certainly experts in that important arena of vacationing for yourselves by yourselves with a couple or with your entire family. They also are great, as you know, as you saw on our Instagram recently. Uh, my wife and her friend went to New York, courtesy of Mouse Fan Travel, and had an absolute blast, and they knew everywhere to go, and the best hotels, the best food, because of MEI and their awesome signature service. Be sure to go to www.mousefantravel.com today and let them know Coffee with Kenobi sent you. One Nation Coffee is the official brew of coffee with Kenobi. I start my morning every day with One Nation Coffee because it is the best. You can start your coffee subscription so you never miss out on the best coffee in the galaxy by going to www.onenationcoffee.com today. Plus, enter the code Kenobi10 to set up a coffee subscription and save 10% off your first order. We are back, of course, with Steve Sansweet talking about our favorite Star Wars Christmas gifts, ones that we've given, that we've received, and maybe sort of pie in the sky, ones that we think would be amazing to have. Uh, Are you out, or do you have any honorable mentions by chance? No, I have one more, and it's the big one. Oh, cool. And this this was a dream, and I still can't believe I have it. Um, This is the Nissan Rogue. Star Wars oh, edition. Wow. And this was a gift from Nissan. Wow. Which one? Uh, the black or the white? I have the black one and Anne has the white one. Wow, that's amazing. So these were the two cars that they used during um during the year for promotion at car shows and and things like that and so they couldn't sell them and um and uh we worked very closely with the nissan people and uh, we had this long discussion and it took a long time to figure it out but we uh we uh both of us made a uh, a donation um uh, at the end of 2017 for uh, the funds for the people who were burned out in the North Bay fires. And um, that was the, that was basically the, the cost of, uh, of the Nissan Rogues for both of us. 
That's wow. That's beautiful because not only, of course, with something incredibly cool, you have one of the coolest versions of it. But even more than that, you are helping out an important cause because that's the kind of guy you are. I love that you have that. I think that's perfect. Well, it's uh, come in very handy. I had a car. I had a 2003 car, and uh, it was uh, probably 160,000 miles on it. And so um, at some point, I would have uh, had to replace it. Um, but, uh, you know, when the rogue first came out, when the star Wars special edition first came out, I looked at it longingly and said, yeah, well, uh, it, it would be nice, but it's a great car. It drives great. The, the Nissan people are wonderful people and, uh, we've had a great relationship. They, they helped out at the last celebration with the 501st, uh, a bash and, um, uh, everything, everything was really great about it. And it, it was the, the Christmas gift that will be very, very difficult to top. Plus I love what some of my favorite star Wars, star Wars items are ones that I love that are collectible, but they're also fully functional and I can actually use them. Yeah. Well, this is pretty functional. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say when that thing came out, we did, uh, we went out to a local dealership here in the Peoria, Illinois area and I did a, a 10 minute video reviewing it and test driving it. And boy, for about three weeks, I was telling my wife, you know, <laughs> that SUV would sure look great at the Zare household, but it was not to be. But maybe someday. I, I love that. I'm so glad you had that. My yeah. last one is more sort of a, of a wish than anything. Uh, and it would be uh, having the, the 1 1 scale Han Solo and Carbonite. To me, that is. The ultimate collectible, and in a, in a meta way, Java made it a collectible, and I've just always been so drawn to it. Han Solo is such a great character. I love Harrison Ford, and you know, 1980, 1981, that was the perfect uh, tandem because you had the Empire Strikes Back and Raiders of the Lost Ark. A lot of great memories there, and I just think that would be that would be the best. Of course, you have uh, the original one that they made. What back in the uh, what year was that? The Elusive Originals goes back to um, 1994, 95. Okay. And then, of course, Sideshow has uh, come out with one in recent years. Right. I was so excited for that. And and surprisingly, Steve, they they were not interested in sending me a review copy of that. I don't know why. It's only $8,000. Yeah. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) I mean... Uh, maybe we got to get the Nissan people to talk to the sideshow people. We may have to do that. Yeah, we'll, uh, see, we'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> that's a, it's a beautiful piece. It's uh, it's uh, really nice. I know two friends who have used it when they were doing home theaters that have the original uh, elusive uh, originals piece, and they have built it into um, doors where they, you know, they're either their equipment room or their DVD room. Wow. So the, it actually swings open. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's got to be uh, very heavy. Uh, yeah, I would think they had to reinforce the uh, the doors quite a bit. Oh, sure. I would think so. That's a great one. Oh, that, there you go. That's another good sales pitch. Well, honey, it can be a door. <laughs> And then it'll be off the sound of Mimi kicking Mars. So. Yeah, we can hide things in it. <laughs> That's right. She said, like, maybe you. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, do you have any uh, honorable mentions or things that just sort of make you smile when it comes to Star Wars and Christmas, whether it's a gift or a memory? Yeah, I think you know, the honorable mention would be would be the the annual uh, the annual Gentle Giant pieces that I that I, I mentioned the the Jar Jar Binks and. Um, they have a. Uh, they did one year a yak face with uh, antlers and holding a candy cane, and uh, Max Rebo with um, a Santa cap and uh, Christmas lights on his jet ball organ, and they did a snow bunny Padme with mistletoe and a salacious crumb with a Santa hat and C three PO's head with an eye falling out. <laughs> and then they did a uh, they did one that was a replica of a Lucasfilm Christmas card. It was Darth Vader with an outstretched uh, 
arm and holding a dove of peace. Oh, beautiful. So, very cool pieces. And, uh, and it's, it's sort of an annual, uh, it used to be just, um, the Christmas gift for a limited number of people, but now with their, uh, Collectors Club. If you are a member of the Collectors Club, you can order one of those as your uh, as your annual gift. Seems like a good investment to me. Plus, you know, again, they're so collectible, and the the novelty of Christmas and Star Wars is a beautiful combo. Hallmark always does a pretty great job with these things too. Yeah, they have the the these, this new set of ornaments that interacts with each other. Yeah, um, which are pretty cool. And dialogue and uh, special effects uh, from the movies, and they light up. Um, and they have this Death Star tree topper that does all sorts of wonderful light uh, things, including the uh, the laser cannon. It, it's a very cool piece. Oh yeah, I love it. I have, I do have that, and I, I got that. Got that one by by pure luck. I just happened to be in a Hallmark, and just on a whim, I asked. I said, "Yeah, we actually have one." I couldn't believe it. And it's definitely uh, definitely a, a wonderful thing to have on the top of your Star Wars Christmas tree. Yeah. Uh, do you uh, – is there anything like a, a Star Wars memory or sort of a wish list? I know you and I were talking before. To me, the ultimate Star Wars Christmas gift would be to go to Pinewood Studios and sit in the cockpit of the screen-used Millennium Falcon. Of course, I don't really have to wish too hard because when Galaxy's Edge opens in Disneyland and Disney World, right. we're going to get to do that. In about five years, when the crowds, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're 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 in a better place than I am because you may get invited as a podcaster. They may do some yeah. media opportunities in advance of uh, the opening of that, or as they're doing soft opening. So that would be very cool, and I I I hope I hope you get that opportunity because I think it's going to be very crowded there for a while. Uh, oh yeah, they're talking three hour waits just to get into that land. Right. Right. And then the the new the new hotel down in Walt Disney World, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yes. Because that may be a way to get in, you know, whatever the cost of that's going to be, but that may be a way to get into the uh Star Wars land. Well, we call it Star Wars land. Well we right. call it Galaxy's Back. Edge. Yeah, that's what I've always thought of as Star Wars Land too. It's hard to unsay it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to that. That would be that would be a wonderful Christmas gift um, after the hotel opens to go down there because the parks are so magical at, at Christmas time, and to be able to do uh, to be able to do the hotel and Star Wars uh, the, the Galaxy's Edge um, around Christmas time would be uh, pretty spectacular. I can't really imagine too much better than that. Uh, before we let you go, I, I know you're getting ready to um, start wrapping some Christmas presents, I'm sure. And I'll be sure to send you my address, of course. Uh, you do that. I, I've got this big uh, Han and Carbonite I don't know what to do with. Oh, perfect. I, I will uh, I will back up the truck and bring it your way. Uh, what, what's uh, some of the new exciting things we've got going on Ranch Ranch? We'll be one over the next few months. Well, now that we've uh, done our big gala in October, and that was a uh, that was a resounding success, um, we started uh, opening up our dates for tours in 2019, and we're getting just great response. And uh, then we have a celebration to look forward to. So uh, you might uh, expect to see Rancho Obi Wan at Celebration again in Chicago. That sounds like a pretty great Christmas present to me. So we're we're working on what we're going to do and uh, exactly how we're going to fit out the booth, and um, uh, but really, uh, really looking forward to uh, to being there again. Thanks to uh, thanks to Lucasfilm and Mary Franklin of Reed Pop, formerly of Lucasfilm, and um, we expect that to be. Uh, a really good time. Now we also have something else on the agenda internally. Um, we have an off site 3,500 square foot warehouse in downtown Petaluma because we're totally out of space here. Well, we're totally out of space in the warehouse. So we've 
made a pretty good deal and we're getting an additional warehouse that's another 3,500 square feet. Wow. Congratulations. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes and no, I understand. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> the idea of the, of the first warehouse was that there would be plenty of room to be able to sort. And, and we started doing that and, you know, sorting objects by manufacturer and making the making it easier to do inventory. Well, we've just truly, truly run out of space. It is packed in there. So the other warehouse is on the other side of this and... Um, it's close enough to move things between the two and, uh, we'll really be using this as a working space. Wow. You are going to be one busy guy, but that is, that's kind of par for the course. Um, I have very little downtime. I, I can't say that I'm bored. I can't say that I've been bored since I've been about, oh, 10 or 11 years old. That's great. So, uh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, I mean, three years in a row now, I've gotten to go to Rancho to go to the gala, and it gets better and better and more magical for me. And uh, I always am so glad to see you, and you're so warm and kind and welcoming into your into your your palace, your Star Wars palace. And uh, I can't recommend enough, ladies and gentlemen, listening to the show, to run out to Rancho Obi Wan and get a tour. Be on the lookout for the next gala when they do announce that at some point. It is well worth your time, and I know that I Clay, I talked about Clayton earlier. Clayton and I are trying to figure out a time sometime in 2019 where the two of us are going to come back but just do a tour instead of the gala, and we're going to bring our, our kids who are both five years old. We feel like that would just be paradise. Sounds great to me. Yeah, that would be so fun. Yeah. Well, Steve, if anyone is not aware of how to get in touch with you or find out more about Rancho Obi-Wan, where can they reach you? They can go online to uh, RanchoObiWan.org, and we have all the information on how to become a member. Um, and if you're looking for a last-minute uh, Christmas gift, the membership to Rancho Obi-Wan would be a, a nice gift. Uh, you get a kit and a, uh, a with an embroidered patch and after the first year a pin and all kinds of other goodies. Um, and you can uh, schedule a tour um the dates are posted and um we do most of our tours on saturdays we're going to be doing uh, um morning tours instead of afternoon tours because so many people have asked uh for morning tours um so you'll have your afternoon you can uh spend the day walking uh downtown petaluma which is just a wonderful wonderful town and lots of interesting stores downtown wonderful comic shop and uh so uh, we've got lots of things planned making some changes uh, here and there and uh, looking forward to 2019 it's gonna be great well steve thank you so much for joining us again for a cup of coffee thank you dan and merry christmas and happy new year to you yes merry christmas and happy new year to you as well let's take our last break and close out the show this is coffee with kenobi Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> Before we get to email, I want to thank our CWK sponsors, One Nation Coffee, Harry's Razors, and Mouse Fan Travel. Please support them the way they support our podcast. And remember to listen to new and archive shows of Coffee with Kenobi wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, Spreaker, Overcast, Blog Talk Radio, Player FM, or our website, www.coffeewithkenobi.com. And if you listen to the show through iTunes, please leave us a review. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and Tumblr, and we'd love for you to check us out there. Also, be sure to listen to our CWK family of shows, including Legends Library, Rebels Reactions, Comics with Kenobi, and Lattes with Leia. Please leave a review for each of their shows as well, be sure to subscribe to each of them individually as they all have their own feeds now. That will do it for Coffee with Kenobi show number 156. A big thank you for Steve Sansweet of Rancho Obi-Wan for joining us and sharing his top five favorite Star Wars Christmas presents or gifts and memories. Such a great time to talk with Steve. Rancho Obi-Wan really is amazing and is well worth your time. I would save your pennies and go because it's a blast. 
Also want to thank Tom for joining us to give us the latest Star Wars news. In addition to the places I just mentioned for Coffee with Kenobi, you can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Network, as well as on Twitter at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R, and you can find my writing on CWK's website, as well as StarWars.com, where I am an official blogger, and on IGN, where I contribute articles on Star Wars and many other topics. Don't forget to check out www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi to help support the show, as well as get access to podcasts not heard anywhere else. There are also t-shirts, coffee mugs, and so much more. Thank you, as always, for joining us for a cup of coffee. On behalf of all of us here at Coffee with Kenobi, we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. I hope you get lots of wonderful Star Wars Christmas presents in your stockings and under the tree, and that you have a wonderful day making great memories with your loved ones. Thank you so much again, everybody. Have a wonderful Christmas. We will see you next time. This is a podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here.